Hello my dear friends. So a lot of people are wondering how to compose your party in Western 3. So I will simply say how I compose my party in Western 3. I play on hard difficulty, it's not a supreme jerk. But it's close enough. I play with permadeath. It's also not the team. And uh, let me start. So at first I start with XP Accelerator. I don't exactly know, know how to name this shit. This guy is actually non-combat variant of XP Accelerator. So his purpose is to gain experience for the rest of the party, so the rest of the party can level slightly behind him. A guy like this need to have lock picking and explosive completely. Uh, last time I had this on Amy and Amy was uh, basically also had brawling, weird uh, science and melee and animal whisper and first aid. So it was very hard, very hard to take all these points to one character. Now this guy will only have barter and mechanics and sneakish. Uh, so it's kind of barely easier to justify this, this level of bullshit. He will have toaster later but we basically sleep on toaster right now because toaster is extremely good skill, as you can ignore it completely and then magically remind yourself that toaster actually exists and start passing all toaster checks. As for leadership, uh, I want him to have leadership, but it's very hard to accommodate leadership. Uh, like, I would squeeze it instead of fucking mechanics early, maybe first... Uh, no, first aid is completely unnecessary. First aid is absolutely mandatory. Mm, so yeah, it's very hard to fucking accommodate some skills at this level uh, to have XP Accelerator do every speed check and you also have to keep in mind some of the skills are useful to have on an 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 member for example, first aid one is no brainer or every single character in your squad like, He doesn't have much, this is XP Accelerator and his purpose is max charisma and then later max intelligence. Now we currently max coordination to uh, leave him useful in battlefield. Uh, that's, the, that's the play and later we will probably go strength or speed to uh, Havana survivi survivability. He's a sniper and as such he will be in very comfortable position to fight anything. Uh, important thing about snipers is that they are far from enemies, uh, so they can stay alive. And because his leadership range is insane thanks to Paladin and Max Charisma and Fox Bonus, we are rather well suited for leadership here. Okay, let's start with the meat. So this is hard carry. The role of hard carry is to get us through the first level of the game. Any, any character technically can go through this and survive, but we also need to kill every single enemy. And this is hard part. Uh, so he, we go max luck and nothing else. Max luck is extremely vital uh, because it allows you to get lucky loot uh, and he basically also is looter. He's also goat killer, serial killer. And yeah, as such I get automatic weapon as no brain skill and go nerd stuff and animal whisper as these three skills amplify. A nerd assault is basically build archetype and later you also add animal whisper and small guns. So this is like core of the build, this is literally build finished. As for perks you don't need any, you just need these things. This three and you're done. This is the end of the build, you can, you can add this shit, you don't have to. And it's great, I know from cover. That's actually good, I don't know if good enough to take because we have a limited number of perks. Later we will add on him first aid one because it's no brainer skill to take. And we will try to make him less paper. As a problem with character like this is his paper thin. Uh, we need a lot of speed, like here, and we need some fucking strength. Nerd Assault is great carry and he is get you through the first levels of the game easily. So now, now Combat Bruiser, this is MVP character. I start with max strength and barely anything else. Some coordination some and maybe some luck speed. And basically character like this can uh, offset problems with uh, skills and inventory. 
So I start with Mili 5 and don't have any brawling. Uh, Mili 5, uh, Weird Science, Animal Whisper, First Aid 1. Uh, I started with this brawling, I started with it later. It's a purpose. Uh, so, what you do is you build intentionally character Mili 5 and you take striking distance, which replaces 5 points of speed. So you max coordination, you max uh, strength, rest in coordination, and then you get bonus speed from nowhere, and you can start murdering people. Uh, you naturally take Circus Freak because it also gives you 4 points of speed. And Crit Resistance, which is also insane. And as background I took Disciple of Metal because this character will have Weird Science plus Toaster. And Fire Damage Weapons. Circus Freak is universally great, so yeah. This is MVP. And her purpose in fight is that because she has max strength, you can walk her in middle of biggest shit on the map. And she can survive here two turns, or maybe longer. Uh, until enemy start scaling damage out of scale of survivability for any character. Then you start to have to switch strategy, but she's still useful there. Uh, because you are basically still growing out of proportion, I started adding Brawling and as perks, I started adding this shit and I gonna go for this shit. Uh, purpose of striking distance is that it works for, for unarmed. And because it replaces 5 points of speed, it's very useful. As Because she is Disciple of Metal, I, I saved this in store and immediately paid for it and immediately upgraded it with anything I had. <laughs> and it's done. I will use it for a long time. For example, this is weapon for 7 level and it costs 3 AP to use. It's rather expensive. So, this is weapon for 17 level. It has almost same damage, but I started adding upgrades. And, uh, star and it has slightly more damage. It used to be worse, but I either upgraded it or it get more damage from something else. I don't know. Most important part is to get something like trooper legs, which replace one point of speed. Kind of. It's not exactly because speed also give you evasion. You need to keep in mind that. When I say replace point of speed, it's, it gives you enough speed to walk to enemy. Okay, and last and not least, uh, you take a small arm character. So small arm is a no brain dead skill. It's so fucking OP, you can take it on every single character to, to seven points. Uh, every single character can benefit from, uh, from small arm seven, excluding melee. Because they have draw. Draw allow you to reload and shoot for free. Reload usually costs cheaper uh, than firing a weapon. As such, you will often find weapon with very little magazine size and draw works on every single weapon, not just for pistols. So it's useful. Devastation is also perfect, even if it's just for shotgun. Uh, she's shotgun surgeon, it's not exactly like small arm character. But because pistols are so fucking good, and I found pistol level 17 and shotgun only level 9, I often use pistols. Like this shotgun would have to work three enemies at the same time uh, to offset uh, power of pistol. Oh, also I immediately started uh, modifying my pistol because it's level 17, I am level 12, I will not replace it soon. Okay, next is Quan. One is standard character add-on. As for how I go with him, I don't give a shit as you see. I just give him ranger star to kiss us checks. And have fun, Quan. You are fucking done. You can collect this points. I don't care about you. You can naturally uh, improve him if you want to. I just don't know what to do with him. And Lucia Wesson. Lucia Wesson, contrary to everyone one else, I max intelligence at her. And go for armor and weapon modding. 8 is here like 10 if you finish Steel Town Pacifist. If you don't finish Steel Town Pacifist, it's like 9. But it's still good. And you also get book for weapon and armor modding, so 
it will be fine, I swear. And so, this is more or less Lucia Wesson. You can also go, go barter variants if you prefer. Personally, I love having one of these add-on characters that you must have add, uh, at least two. You can have six custom rangers as, uh, as the slaves for weapon modding or barter or fucking anything useless like this. But currently, barter leader is a meta. I'm telling you. Uh, so, uh, barter leader allow you to buy cheap and do shit. Uh, always operate at highest trading efficiency. <laughs> but we currently go lockpick max. So I need le one level up and then I will go read book and go max lockpick. And then I will start going explosives. Uh, purpose of going max lockpick so early is that I will not have to bother with it anymore. It's rather convenience more than anything. I also wanna get my way through the uh, toaster repair uh, things. So I can start uh, using skill points properly. And that's pretty much it. So my squad composition mostly uh, rely on three pillars. Uh, uh, hard carry uh, DPS, uh, the distance DPS, uh, hard carry tank and uh, hard carry AOE control. Her speed is 11, this is why it doesn't glow. Uh, she has sp helmet plus one speed. And we also have Circus Freak and Mopey Poet. If you don't know what background, to do, what quick to take, Circus Freak has no downsides whatsoever. Look, detection time 2 seconds. If you really wanna sneak, if you really want detection time so fucking badly, you can craft one of these things. Look at this, combat speed minus 0, 4, and combat speed from Circus Freak is plus 0, 5. So you are still on the plus, if you combine these two. Actually, I wonder if I should wear this. It's probably better than armor. What you have? That's effect resistance. This is pure armor. This is that effect resistance. Okay, pretty good. So your XP accelerator get hot to increase charisma and get star to increase XP. You will always get XP bonus items, so you need to, to get Bart's Tail quest and finish Bart's game in the old machine in Bizarre to get proper set for him. But for now, uh, the starting DLC items are good enough. So I hope this is informative for you and have a good day.